For the purposes of this discussion, we're going to make a definition about real numbers. This symbol here stands for the set of all real numbers. So we have the real number line pictured, and we're going to define small magnitude numbers to be those real numbers that lie between negative 1 and 1. We're going to define large magnitude numbers to be those numbers that are either bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1. Negative 1 and 1 are neither big nor small in this scheme. Examples of big magnitude numbers are, not surprisingly, 6 million. Negative pi we're going to call a big magnitude number, and perhaps more surprising, 1.0001 will be, by definition, a big magnitude number. Small magnitude numbers include negative a half, 113 over 355, and 0.9999. You could come up with your own descriptive terms to talk about numbers, say huge magnitude means very far away from zero, and tiny magnitude might mean close to zero, maybe middling means close to one or negative one. These are all rather informal ideas. Big and small, we have these specific definitions, but we could describe relative positions of numbers using other descriptive terms. The reciprocal function is key to everything that we're talking about from here on out. So we're going to examine it quite closely. Here's a graph of y equals 1 over x, the reciprocal function. And if you plug in an argument between 0 and 1, the value turns out to be greater than 1. So the punchline is the reciprocal of a small positive number is a big positive number in magnitude. And similarly, if you plug in a number between negative 1 and 0, the value turns out to be less than negative 1. And so the reciprocal of a small negative number is a big negative number. Again, we, small and big refers to the magnitude here. You can try out other examples. The reciprocal of a big positive number is a small positive number, and the reciprocal of a big negative number is a small negative number. You should somehow absorb this principle internally. Now, whether it's memorizing this table or something a little more symbolic or any other way you want to do it, you should do it. And maybe the best way is just to realize what the graph of 1 over x looks like and reproduce results as needed. That's probably the safest way. Let's apply this principle to the following problem. We have the sketch of a graph of a function f, and we wish to sketch the graph of its reciprocal 1 over f of x. One of the first things you should probably do in such a problem is identify the lines y equal 1 and y equals negative 1. Because wherever the graph of f intersects these, this is going to give you a point where the graph of 1 over f also goes, because the reciprocal of 1 is 1, and the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So here are two points that we already know are on the graph of 1 over f. Now we will analyze each of the remaining regions in terms of big and small magnitude numbers. So You'll notice that on this part of the graph, the values of f are all big negative numbers. We know that the reciprocal of a big negative number is a small negative number. So whatever the graph looks like, it's all got to fit into a position here between the line y equals negative 1 and the x-axis. Similarly, this part of the graph consists of places where the value of f is a big positive number. And we know that when we reciprocate a big positive number, it turns into a small positive number. And so we're going to, flip's not the right word, but we're going to sort of flip squish it over the line y equals 1 to get the reciprocal graph. Now you can get some quantitative information by picking some key points, say endpoints if you have them, or peaks and valleys and you can get your graph to line up right about where it should be. Now what remains is an analysis of the slippery bit. Here's a region where you have values that are small negative numbers. So we expect these to reciprocate to big negative numbers. We're also going to make the observation that as you approach negative 2 from the left, the values of f stay negative and they approach zero. So we, we will be reciprocating tinier and tinier magnitude numbers, giving us huge magnitude numbers that are negative. 
the punchline is the limiting value of 1 over f as x comes into negative 2 from the left should be negative infinity. You can play the same game from the right. These small positive numbers will reciprocate to big positive numbers, and as you approach negative 2 from the right, the function values of f are positive and get closer to 0, so reciprocating these tiny magnitude positive numbers should give us huge magnitude positive numbers, and the limiting value of 1 over f as x approaches negative 2 from the right is infinity. So here's our completed sketch of the graph of f, which isn't bad. This is a skill that's pretty handy to have. Let's try to distill a limit law from this example. We've introduced some behavior at the argument a. a is not in the domain of f. However, it appears that the limiting value as x approaches a does exist. As we've pointed out in previous videos, the limiting value of f is determined by values of the function near a. We reciprocate all these nearby values to find the values of 1 over f. So if the limiting value of f as x approaches a is l, and this is very important, l is not 0, because if it's 0, then we'll be taking reciprocals of tiny magnitude numbers, and we have a different situation on our hand. But if the limiting value of f as x approaches a is not 0, then it stands to reason that the limiting value as x approaches a of the reciprocal of f is 1 over l. In summary, the limit of a reciprocal is the reciprocal of the limit. If the limiting behavior of f is 0 as x approaches a, then in order to analyze the limiting behavior of the reciprocal, simply use the property that the reciprocal of a small magnitude number is big, and you have to pay attention to the signs, and you have to pay attention to which side of the argument you're approaching. Essentially, there are four qualitative cases. You could try to memorize them, but it's probably best to just be agile enough to reproduce these results as you need them. So let's put this all together with a few examples. Here's a function g on the right, and assuming that the limits are all as they appear to be, we're going to evaluate these limits of the reciprocal function. As x approaches 1, it appears that the limiting value of g is 3. 3 being non-zero, the limiting value of the reciprocal is going to be 1 third. Now we'll notice that the limiting value of g as x approaches 3 does not exist. It's different from the left and the right hand side. However, these principles we've been talking about still apply when you approach from one side. Since the limiting value of g as x approaches from the left is 2, the limiting value of the reciprocal will be 1 half. And since the limiting value of g from the right at 3 appears to be negative 4, the limit of the reciprocal as x approaches 3 from the right is negative 1 quarter. To analyze the limiting behavior of the reciprocal of the logarithm function at x equals 1, let's put a sketch of the logarithm function down first. And we'll notice that as x approaches 1, the limiting value of the logarithm is 0. This indicates that we're going to have some infinite limiting behavior for the reciprocal function. As you approach 1 from the left, since the values are all negative, we expect the limiting value to be negative infinity. And as you approach 1 from the right, since the values of ln are all positive, you expect the limiting value of the function to be positive infinity. Since these values don't match up, the flat-out limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. Finally, let's analyze the limiting behavior of 1 over x minus 2 quantity squared at x equals 2. The graph of y equals x minus 2 squared is easy to sketch. It's simply the standard parabola y equals x squared shifted to the right two units. We'll notice that the limiting value as x approaches 2 is 0, so we expect limiting value of the reciprocal to be infinite, and since the function values are positive as we approach from either side, the limiting value of f as x approaches 2 is infinity.